Well, I'd like to invite now on the virtual stage a wonderful panel with some really key finance industry players who've uh, featured in the 2021 uh, Bloomberg Gender Equality Index as finance institutions who are actually trying to drive forward equality in the workplace uh, together with an expert of an NGO uh, working on education in Europe. So here they are. You've seen their names on the screen already. Antoine Sia, Head of Company Engagement at BNP Paribas. Uh, Shaheen Akram, Global Head on Diversity and Inclusion at IMG. Uh, Maria Janssen, Head of markets at Spade Bank, Roberta Maracino, Head of Group ESG Strategy and Impact Banking, Unicredit, and Salvatore Vigo, Chief Executive, Junior Achievement Europe. So thank you all for being on the panel with us. Um, Shaheen, let me actually start off with you. When you look at some of the things that you, your bank has put in place, what's worked and what's worked less well? Sure. Thank you very much, Francine. Lovely to meet everybody and thank you for the opportunity here. So there's a number of things that ING have been working on. Um, I joined in 2018. So let me just share with you some of the things that I think have really started to help us. So I think number one, accountability, right? So thinking about how are we going to make sure that we, we, we know what where we want to kind of go and the progress we kind of want to make. We introduced something called the 70% principle. Um, in 2018, which was started to bleed into the organization in 2019. And what that essentially is, is about saying that, you know, we want to build an organization based on mixed teams in within an inclusive setting. 70% means that no more than 70%, we aspire for no more than 70% of our teams to be made up of the same gender, no more than 70% of the same nationality, and no more than 70% of the same age group. Um, and they are proxies to help us understand how we kind of move the needle on diversity uh, and inclusion. And so what we do do is use those, uh, those, those measurements to track our progress through dashboards. So that is kind of big one step for any one organization to know what it's kind of going for and how it's tracking against that. And, you know, globally, yes, we meet those measures. We meet the 70%, but the challenge is not globally. It's in countries and it's in business lines. And that is where we look to see progress and we track and we and we kind of share that. So I think that's really important, number one. Um, and number two, we um, have looked, you know, like many organisations, our processes and practices, zooming in on the ones that we um, think are going to move the needle most. So, for example, I will say succession planning is one area that we are looking in. How can we build even more stronger, diverse pipelines? We currently have two women on our board, on our management board, a two of seven two out of seven even. Um, yes, that's that's good, but we want to make more progress. So I think, you know, looking at our succession plans is, is really important for us. And the third piece that's really working for us is, you know, the dialogue around moving any strand of diversity has to include more than that strand. So opening up the dialogue to the majority of the organisation, if not the whole organisation, to really contribute and see what their role is in driving the change. So, you know, things like telling stories, you know, regular beats throughout the year, um, different people featured, different stories to help people connect and understand what it's like to be in the shoes of, of a woman on the management board. What's it like to be in the shoes of a woman that's going through the LGBT, as part of the LGBT community? So really trying to engage, um, and I think the previous uh, speaker said, on many different levels. Um, Maria, can you point to some of the things that you're doing really well and things that maybe you wish, you know, Spedbank were doing better? Of course I can, and thank you. I think change starts from the top, and our CEO, Jens Henriksson, is extremely committed. He's part of a community called Nordic <coughs> CEOs for Sustainable Future, where gender equality is a key uh, issue. And uh, I think what we do, we have gender uh, targets to have gender balance in all management teams, also in all senior positions of 40, 60. We didn't choose 50, because sometimes it's really hard to achieve exactly 50, but either 40, 60 men or women. Uh, we also, in all senior recruitments, we always have a man and a woman candidate. And also we did something really fun, actually, here in markets. You know, it's a lot of, uh, it's really mu much more guys in the markets operation. And I want to increase the pace of change here. So we brought in 10 young women from university and we were specific. We wanted women with a technical background to increase the pace of change. And we got a lot of nice feedbacks from our women that just being a group was so good. They could uh, exchange um, a lot of ideas and they could also meet after work and discuss how do you approach this and this. So there are many things you can do, both on a broader perspective in the whole bank but also I think we must target these areas like mine that are really male dominated and move faster.
Antoine, what are you doing? So, you know, better, and what could be do, what could be done better? Well, uh, first of all, we I believe that the the, the Bloomberg Gender Equality Index uh, really uh, uh, encourages us to uh, to have uh, ambitious uh, uh, gender equality uh, um, objectives, and uh, for us, it's really a, a kind of uh, of a uh, framework, uh, we, we really use uh, its uh, five pillars. Uh, first, uh, female leadership and talent pipeline. So I can give very obvious uh, uh, results. For example, uh, uh, when I joined the company more than 20 years ago, uh, there was absolutely no country uh, at BNP Paribas that was headed by a woman. None, none of it. And now we can say that uh, United States, uh, France, uh, United Kingdom, Italy, Switzerland, Canada, Spain, India, and several uh, other countries are headed by women. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it, it's an example. Uh, but uh, more generally speaking, in terms of female leadership and talent pipelines, uh, we, we, we really believe uh, that uh, impo it's, it's important to have uh, uh, ambitious uh, targets. Uh, uh, and, uh, and this is important to do. Uh, women uh, represent 50% of our emerging talents uh, and 46% of our talents uh, overall. Uh, uh, we have al uh, already uh, uh, one third of women uh, in our uh, executive committee uh, and uh, uh, we have uh, set the ambition uh, to have a, a proportion of women uh, to at least 40% uh, by 2025. Uh, so it's a first uh, a point we, we, we need uh, to have this uh, ambitious target for female uh, leadership and, uh, and Thailand uh, pipeline. Of course, second, uh, uh, equal pay. It's, uh, you always have to, to, to improve the, the situation. We, we, we know that we are not completely satisfactory, but we have done uh, a, a lot of uh, improvement and we are now close to the targets, but we need uh, to, to, to continue uh, to have a global uh, gender-based uh, compensation uh, uh, review. It's absolutely uh, uh, essential. Uh, third point is to have uh, uh, an inclusive uh, uh, culture uh, that, that's why uh, we have, uh, uh, for example, signed a global framework agreement in 2018, uh, which includes uh, 14 weeks uh, of fully paid uh, primary parental leave uh, in all of our countries and recommend a, a minimum of six days of fully paid uh, secondary uh, uh, parental leave. Uh, uh, we are also uh, uh, aimed to uh, raise awareness uh, about violence against women. BNP Paribas has been a, a member of uh, one in three women uh, since its launch in 2018. And, uh, and, and, and we can see that this uh, uh, generates also a, a real uh, improvement because unfortunately uh, it's a, a real problem and uh, the, the company and the work uh, has to, to contribute to the solution. I mentioned yeah. the fourth pillar. Thank you. It's, uh, it's, which is essential, which is a sexual harassment. Uh, we improved our procedure. Uh, we have now a very, very strong uh, 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 procedures uh, for this. So we are, uh, and finally, uh, uh, we are uh, uh, working in pro-women public coalitions so, such as uh, uh, He4She. Uh, we have uh, uh, improved uh, a lot uh, the uh, female uh, representation uh, in uh, our capital markets activities, our global market Great. activities, uh, and uh, so it's, a, it's, a, it's an important <laughs> element. Thank you, Antoine. No, no one so far has told me what they could do better. So let me go to Roberta and Salvatore, and then we have a discussion of actually what's not working so well within your institution. Roberta. Okay, so let me say that uh, most of the uh, initiatives that have been mentioned by my previous colleague are almost the same that we are doing also in Unicredit. But uh, I would just add uh, a few additional elements that in my opinion are, and, and in our opinion are very important that we are integrating in our approach. So first of all, DNI, diversity and inclusion is part of the overall ESG approach. So this means that it is considered part of uh, 
purpose-driven organization and an organization like we are that uh, sees the, the DNA and all the commitment on environment and social issues as part of our strategy. So this is part of our strategy, part of, part of our values and part of our behaviors. Particularly on DNA, there is a strong, strong commitment on uh, changing things and a lot of initiatives have been already put in place. But first of all, uh, in order to work well, like uh, uh, in our case, I mean, the DNI agenda should be clearly at the top, at the CEO and top management level. So, which means uh, for us, uh, in having set clear targets, so we have targets uh, in terms of KPIs for, for top manager linked to gender equality since 2017. So we have 2023 target to, re to reach a, a certain uh, percentage of senior leadership position uh, for women, which is 30% in our case. We have also uh, the newly elected board uh, that will have uh, probably 45% uh, of the representation which are women. And in addition, let me say setting targets means also having the executive committee members involved in promoting women. We have a program actually in Unicredit where each executive committee member, including myself, has one or two sponsoree and we have the responsibility to, to let them grow and to accelerate their growth. Since the inception of the program uh, a month and a half ago, uh, as far as I know, at least three of these 27 women have already progressed to more senior roles. Um, the second element, together with the setting the targets, the thing that we have done pretty well, but it is still something that we can improve there, is uh, uh, endorsing the change in mindset and in the organizational culture, which means, uh, I mean, uh, organizing training and development uh, initiatives, but uh, and uh, working uh, toward, I mean, the hidden bias uh, for promoting and accelerating the growth of women. But on the other side, also putting in place incentive schemes. Uh, for example, DNI and sustainability goals are part also of our MBO and long-term incentive plan of our top managers, mm -hmm. and also acting as a role model and giving visibility to top uh, female leaders uh, in the in the organization in order to uh, provide examples that uh, growing and having a, a successful career in banking is something which is possible. And then another two elements. The first one is uh, demonstrate uh, as a bank uh, that we can act uh, as part of the solution, not only within the organization, but also outside the organization, providing support on the social impact financing uh, and support to women entrepreneurs. And also, let me say, um, financial education, because the financial behaviors of our women clients is completely different from the financial behavior of our men clients. I mean, women apply less for loans. The women have also, I mean, higher rejection rates when they apply for loans. And, mm -hmm. uh, and they are also at risk of uh, financial exclusions once they get off uh, uh, of the work. And the final point is uh, the measurement of, uh, of the progresses, uh, which is uh, also part of the today discussion, because, for example, being assessed, uh, assessed externally by some uh, ESG rating agencies or assessors like mm -hmm. Bloomberg, uh, uh, gender equality index is something that it is very, very relevant uh, and important for us. We made a big progress last year uh, and uh, uh, we are running ahead of uh, the average level of the financial sector because, I mean, we worked a lot on very specific elements and themes that uh, have been highlighted last, last year. So keep the track, measure yourself and, and, uh, and raise further the bar for the next time. Thank you. Salvatore, what are you seeing? Well, I think um, I would comment on a few words that I heard, which is um, what, why, when, and who. What? Uh, what is a reflection of reality? Women are underrepresented in leadership roles across all levels, as well as in sectors that are paths uh, to top positions, such as in finance. Why? The reasons, we all agree, they are not biological. The reasons are cultural, are social. 
So when do we really need to intervene? What we believe at JA Europe by serving more than 4 million youth every year in 40 European countries is that the earliest, the better. Because the differences and the gender stereotyping start at a very early age. And this is why education plays a role, a key role for young women. Entrepreneurship education, which is one of our pillars, together with work readiness and financial literacy, is a proven way to improve girls' confidence in using competences that are typically viewed as traditionally obstacles to female entrepreneurship, such as financial literacy, managing uncertainty, and marshalling resources, as we, just, as we just heard. In fact, the research shows that education in financial literacy and entrepreneurship has a significant bigger effect on young girls compared to boys. So the more opportunities for learning about financial literacy and entrepreneurship we can provide to young girls at school, the more women we will see in the future choosing the career in finance. But is it enough with the current educational systems and the current educational structure? We believe there is a significant importance of bringing the business closer to the schools. This is why when we serve every year over 4 million young people, we also leverage over 150,000 business volunteers that goes into the schools. And that's the collaboration of the world of finance that brings the, the world of finance into the classrooms. And some of those volunteers are definitely volunteers of Bloomberg, with whom we uh, partner in more than 15 European countries, or Arro Global, in which we have a fantastic financial literacy program, as in BNY Mellon, CET, HSBC, NN, but also Euroclear, Euronext, Ergon Capital, MetLife, and Bank of Tokyo Mitsubishi. We are working with European Banking Federation and over 70 financial institutions across Europe to go into the schools. Leverage is 150,000 business volunteers also to provide role models. And our key action is to ensure that many girls as possible have access to, to these programs. We've been doing this for over 100 years. Now, if you ask us to build roads and bridges, that's not our business. Our business is really to bring what is good of the private sector into the educational systems. And I think that we need more and more inspiration for the young girls to see themselves, to project themselves. I want to see to my three years old daughter who is just entering into the school system, seeing herself in the clothes of a, a successful business leader that we have seen today yeah. in this panel and get inspiration out of that on how she will be in more than 20 That's years very powerful. from now. Salvatore, thank you. So let's try and unpack. I'm going to ask you if you can just to uh, keep your answers fairly short because we're running out of time. I have many questions from the audience and I have many questions myself. So given what Salvatore has just laid out in 30 seconds, Joaquin, can you tell me at, at what point, so you're all involved at some level in either recruiting or, or hiring. Um, at what level do women drop out? Is it at the beginning? Do you have one candidate for one candidate? Or is it when they have children? Is it before? Is, can, can you pinpoint the, the, the most crucial, like three, four years, when the labor force becomes uneven? So in my experience, not, not just at ING, but, but wider as well, women start to, um, start to sort of change their pattern, I suppose, is um, when they get into the mid-management levels. So, and that isn't necessarily, you know, oft people often point to childbearing age. It's not always about childbearing. And I think we, that's a, red, a little bit of a red herring. So I think there's many factors that women start to get exposed to. And that is where we need to kind of put some attention as to why that is happening. And that is what we are also looking at. What, what is, what is um, taking place in our, in, in our organisations? You know, what, what's happening? So it's not, I, I really want to stress, it's not just because it, the women start to decide all to have children that this, this leak starts yeah. to happen. So could it be more pressures, uh, but, you know, pressures of the job or more peer pressure, Maria? Do yeah, you see course. that kind of yeah, dropping I mean, off? Let me yeah, go to, I mean, they could be... Yeah, sorry, sorry. Chalina, then let me go to Maria. Uh, okay, so uh, go ahead. about market, 
Yeah, if I spoke about, speak about markets or, or dealing rooms, I think it's about attracting women and change the way that we view the finance industry. I think many movies, uh, they portray markets or dealing rooms as harsh and bold and, and only about numbers. I think for many women, we need to go out and tell them it's, it's the most fun job in the world. It's, uh, it's, you have to be good at relationships, clients, numbers, juggle many balls at the same time. I mean, it's, it's perfect for women to work in a dealing room. I think we need to convey that message already at university and in the smaller schools to so send out uh, women, show that it's, it's fun and just promote it. Also, when we recruit women, women, many times I need actually to go and get them. They don't apply. They think it's too dangerous and too hard and, and it's totally wrong, I say. Women do this exactly Antoine, in the same way as men. Yeah, Antoine, where do, where do you see, do you see a, a point where women drop off, Antoine? Yeah, I, I, I believe, that, you know, uh, for instance, uh, I do sometimes, I go uh, in colleges uh, to uh, uh, just explain my experience and share, the, and share what, what we do uh, at BNP Paribas. And, and uh, once I asked uh, to associations that work in college, uh, what should I tell to these uh, young uh, people? And, uh, and once the person told me, you should tell the girls that they can do uh, all the jobs. They can go to finance, but they can also go to medicine. Any uh, job is allowed for uh, a, a girl and for, and for a woman. And interestingly enough, when we ask after the session uh, what uh, the, the, the people uh, bear in mind, the only, uh, the, the most interested, interesting sentence of what I have said is this. The, 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 the girls uh, have in mind that all the, the jobs, they, that they can do all the jobs. And it's very, uh, right. so. But when, they, Antoine, when, once you hire them, so once you have this female workforce, when do they, you know, stop working for BNP Paribas? I, 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 sorry, I didn't catch your question. <laughs> The question is, at what point, once you have these women working for your institution, at what yeah. time, you know, at what age is it difficult to retain talent, female talent? And then I have a lot of questions on, on diversity, so yeah, we'll get to I, that. I, yeah, I, honestly, uh, it's very difficult to say that there is a, uh, really an age. You can know that uh, when you have been... Uh, uh, of course, we train the people for three or four years initially, and there, there are uh, departures uh, at that moment. But I wouldn't uh, say that there is a, a particular age, because uh, uh, when people have a market value, uh, they can, uh, they can uh, uh, go at, uh, out of the company at, uh, at any age. So it's not, uh, I, I right. wouldn't say that, it, that we have a, uh, a, a very uh, uh, relevant uh, drop off age. What I say, what I know okay. is that in the beginning, uh, when we build uh, our talent pipeline, uh, we, we notice uh, that uh, uh, at several stages, uh, we lose part of the pipeline. Uh, and at the end of over the years, uh, we could see that we had more men at the top than uh, in the, uh, the, the proportion initially. So that's why we are now uh, uh, trying to change this. Uh, and we, ha we are trying right. uh, to have a, a talent pipeline uh, where we will have uh, even uh, more women than men because we want to avoid deperdition. In BNP Paribas, we have 53% uh, of uh, women and 47% uh, 40, of men. And we want to have uh, this, uh, to keep a proportion of uh, uh, the, the most equal uh, as possible. And for this reason, yeah. uh, we, we try to have a, a pipeline talent uh, where the, the, the minimum of women uh, is 50 percent, which means that we will mm. now be uh, slightly above 50 percent uh, to have a gender equality under the, the, I would say, the top management. Right. 
Roberta, I'm getting a lot of questions actually on diversity, why we're focusing so much on equality, and this is an equality, you know, maybe a bit more focused on gender, but do, how much more do we need to do um, to, to be inclusive for, you know, all, all you know, like people of, of all walks of life, um, and even yeah. um, people that don't identify with the feminine or, or masculine gender? Yeah, I, I believe that, uh, I mean, uh, said uh, by my previous colleague, there are, I mean, various steps that we need uh, to monitor and, and focus on. Also. At the recruiting level, we need to in ensure that there is no, uh, let's say, discrimination for any kind of diversity. This is true for women, and this is true for any other, let's say, uh, diversity, but also I would say competence, no? If we hire, if we hire for example, people specialized in finance, why don't we hire also people who are specialized in other, uh, I don't know, humanistic uh, uh, areas that uh, can be even uh, uh, more uh, interesting from uh, from a strategic point of view and looking forward point of view. So, I mean, uh, monitoring all the steps from recruiting to development uh, to the growth to the top. Uh, ensure that uh, we clearly track uh, where are the, the steps where we miss uh, some kind of diversity. So let me go back for, at the women example. In Unicred, for example, at the recruiting side, we are already balanced, uh, even recruiting more women than men. We miss uh, some of the pipeline uh, at the middle management uh, at the level. Uh, and depending on the countries, uh, it depends very much on uh, on the stage of uh, the development of a family. So typically, for example, in Italy, in general, after the second child, 60% of the women don't come back to work. So this is something that should be clearly uh, raised, because if there is no public support on this, there should be company support on this, if we want to uh, keep this kind of talents. And, uh, and uh, regarding the more general, uh, I mean, diversity of areas, uh, also I have to say that there are some areas that uh, where women apply a bit less. This is true for a corporate investment banking. This is true for the risk positions, for the lending positions, for example. And we have to teach them that there are plenty of, of opportunities there and that uh, there is a career track for there, for them there. I mean, this is something which is not visible. Let me just add one more thing with that we have uh, uh, um, observed, that typically women yeah. go for a specialized career, while men, uh, I mean, uh, have a, a sort of zigzag. They move from a position to another position more easily than women. So we have also to teach women that, I mean, moving and uh, stepping into other opportunities, even if you have to reassess yourself and move outside your comfort zone is something that they have to touch. Roberta? If I can. Yeah, and this goes back to a question, uh, you know, on the entitlement gap, which is basically the gap that, you know, women maybe feel more reluctant to ask for promotions and pay rises. So are there clear incentives, Roberta, that you think should be put in place to make sure that that does not happen. Exactly. No, but there so, should, can anyone I, pinpoint? I, I don't know. Yeah, no, go ahead, I, Salvador. I, I Is there anything concretely that can be done yeah, on this entitlement gap? Oh, but there is an entitlement gap, definitely, it has to be uh, reduced and it has to be incentivized. The, 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 but I would not focus just on the promotion itself. It's the, uh, the full workplace around it that need to change. One thing that this pandemic has taught us is flexibility is the word. I myself, my wife, after three years, of having our second child exactly just went to back to work two weeks ago. Just two weeks ago. And you know why this is possible? Not because air employers allow her to take it a flexible approach, because my employer allowed me to get a flexible approach. So I can definitely also combine much better my personal and family life with uh, the work that would allow my wife to pursue her career options. And I think this is what need to be changed because when we go to, when we get, we'll get out of this pandemic, we cannot go back to normal. We should go back to better. 
And what we have taught here that you, there are plenty of jobs that you can do it in a flexible manner, no matter your gender then this should be incentivized because this would definitely help to spur, promote and allow also for women to get more opportunities. And Salvatore, that goes actually to two questions. One is how many men are watching, because that also makes a big difference. Um, to, you know, Shaheen, Antoine, Maria, you know, I don't know who wants to go first, but how many men are actually, you know, asking for paternity leave or, or getting that support? And would that make a real difference, especially for women who go into management level? I don't know who wants to answer it I first, can, either I think... Maria or Shaheen. Yeah, Maria. <laughs> I would oh. love to start. No, actually, I mean, I think we've come pretty far in the Scandinavian countries on, on that. We're really mm -hmm. happy. I mean, uh, I start to see in new generations now that people share parental leave, and that's fantastic. Like you said, that's great for the women. We have a fixed income trader right outside my room here. He's home on six months uh, parental leave. I think that's great. Set role models that it's equal for men and women to be home and share. And, you know, it's like six months is usually you share six months each. It's perfect for the children and it's perfect for the employer and for both women and men. Um, Shaheen, you know, I have another question. Really... Yeah, go for it. Go ahead, Shaheen. No, no, please. What was the what was the question that you had? So the other question is, how do your organizations balance out meeting the diversity tag targets and limiting the negative effect of positive discrimination? Sure. Okay, this is a question that comes up regularly. You know, does 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 mean does it mean that when you meet diversity targets, you somehow I don't know drop the standard or the you know or the qualifications that are required? That that's not what diversity stands for at all. It's about looking much more broad, broadly than you would normally when it comes to looking for talent. You still hold the same you know expectations because when you are assessing, you're assessing objectively. You're still looking for the same skills and experiences. You might be looking at it for in a different package but essentially you're looking for the same skills and experiences you are assessing objectively you have um you know a diverse set of panels that are looking across and assessing um the individual's competency as they come through and then when you make a decision you base that on objective decision making and you also make sure that the person that you're bringing in is going to bring value to the team is going to enrich the team that you're bringing them in. So this is not about you know meeting a target to tick a box because unfortunately in that instant in that case nobody actually wins the person that you bring in or the organisation. There's just too much fallout from that and actually it's a very short fix. It's a very short term fix and it does not it does not help at all. So the way to keep this um, where it should be is objective decision making all the way through the recruitment process and even before you start recruiting. Be objective in what you're looking for and where you look, and then make sure you follow that through the process. It's not about Antoine. Any think, thoughts on, on if I yeah if I can. Okay. And I don't think you need to do it because here it's just we're not discussing just to check the box. But this is actually good for the company. There is such a talent shortage out there that you cannot bind yourself just because you're not embracing diversity in full. It is good for your company itself. So the talent shortage by simply uh, looking more and more where the talent is, irrespective active really of looking into too much closed binding uh, eyes then you are definitely going to do good for society and good, good do well for the company uh, i concur with i concur with this and the, and it's uh, it shows uh, how, how much uh, the, the cultural change uh, is uh, important. I remember a few years ago, uh, there was a guy who was almost irreplaceable. It was really the, the guy who was well in his job. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, and that once I asked him, OK, is there a moment you, will, uh, you are going to change a job? And he says, no, because I know that the, the CEO relies on me in this job. It is very difficult. And I, I, I just told him, but listen, uh, you, you, you say that you are difficult to be replaced by your deputies, but uh, did you ever think your deputies are all men? It was a few years ago. Did you ever think uh, to have uh, a woman uh, 
uh, to consider a woman that is maybe not your direct deputy, but uh, that is uh, just under, and maybe uh, she had uh, uh, a slower career for one reason or some reason, but at the end of the day, you, knew, you know that she could uh, uh, replace you at, what, at one point. And he, he, he looked at me and he says, oh, it's, uh, it's fantastic, you know. <laughs> what you are telling me uh, is really uh, an eye-opener uh, for me. It's incredible. And, uh, and, 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 and uh, I'm glad to announce that the, the person who has uh, taken his position since uh, is, is a woman. And, uh, and, uh, and obviously, uh, <laughs> intro it, 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 at one moment, but now we are, we are much better than this, but at, at, okay, at, yeah. at, at one I'll moment, try. introducing the, the, the woman in, in the game has been a, a fantastic ga game changer for the, the company. I, I mean, and, and now we are uh, uh, almost uh, gender equal in the senior management position. So it's, uh, it's uh, we, yes, we were, uh, and our company is very successful. So I, yeah. I suppose that having much more women uh, has been really part of being so successful. That's quite a story. I didn't know whether to laugh or to cry. Um, we're out of time, but actually in 20 seconds each, uh, if you could each maybe say, you, you know, in 20 seconds, your pitch to a new chief executive that you have or someone else chief executive and what they could do more to advance diversity at all levels. Maria. Encourage people to dare to fail. You have to dare to jump on new opportunities, to take chances, otherwise you won't succeed. That goes for both women and men. And I want more women to dare to fail, learn and move on, and move up. Roberta. I would say, I mean, the, uh, to steer uh, the, the current plan, uh, accelerate on reducing the pay gap, and focus on financing the inclusion. Focus on financing and make a, an increasing effort on financing the inclusion. Because uh, we have not flagged this point. We have just focused on our internal environment, but we as banks, as banks can do much more in terms of uh, our impact that we can have with our social financing in financing women and financing, I mean, diverse uh, uh, people who uh, are suffering of financial inclusion. So focus more on this. Salvatore? For what would you like to be remembered for? That's my, my question that I would pose to the leaders of different companies. Would you like to be remembered, if you are a woman, as to be a role model and inspiring others to follow your path? If you are a man, for having supporting and embracing diversity across your organization and inspiring the next generations, what would you like to be remembered for? Good one, um, Antoine. Twenty seconds. Uh, so, so, so I, I would say the, the same regarding uh, uh, inclusion and regarding uh, uh, being uh, helping with. Uh, the, the women, you know, uh, we have the dedicated an envelope uh, for uh, women entrepreneurs, and since the, the, the we didn't reach the objective, the banks has not done the objective. And we really believe that I really believe that having the culture of using our power of financial institution to empower women uh, from uh, very uh, uh, modern startups than uh, the the, than the the work we do with agriculture in remote countries in in in, uh, in sorry in uh, in emerging countries uh, that's uh, that's really empowering the women and being an institution that uh, develops its services in empowering with the women is something which is, which is essential for us and uh, and we believe that uh, uh, if we want to create a, a, a real uh, gender equal culture it's absolutely important to have uh, the, the financial uh, services uh, 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 women uh, uh, empowering the women in our culture as a bank Shaheen, your, your uh, 20 second pitch to the, to the new chief executive. Sure, thank you. So in 20 minutes, uh, 20 seconds even, I would say that, you know, continue to inspire, inspire the people around you, the men and the women that actually, and, and, and our people from other communities as well, inspire them to follow your lead, 
because you will lead the way in terms of how, how people show up and what the expectation is. And you ask people to demonstrate what they're doing and the impact that is making as a regular beat through the organization, not the beginning of the year or at the end of the year, but on a regular basis, let's, let's, show, let's show the actions that we're taking and the impact that we're making. That's what I would say.